a soldier of Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Number 205, 216, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the safe of earth shall gather over on the other shore. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When... your hand and praise the Lord. When the roll is called up yonder, we all want to be there. Amen. The golden morning is fast approaching, number 205. The golden morning is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come to take his faithful and happy children to their promised home. <clears throat> Take his faithful and happy 
440 from the church in Mal O. Cheering is the Christian Christ while toiling here below. As Christian, we have what is called the blessed hope. Hope in the coming of the Lord because we know that death for the, for Christian, the Christian is only asleep. Because we are looking for the day when Jesus will come and to, to give us life eternal. But until then, let us live with that hope in our hearts. Oh, cheering Christian hope while toiling here below. Okay, Brother Portius, when men start songs, many times they are too high. <laughs> that is why. <laughs> when men start songs, sometimes they are a little bit too high. All right? But they may seem to be busy. Oh, okay. cheering is the Jesus as he is. Absolutely. Yes. You know, the things that happen in this world, you know, Jesus wants us to be disgusted with the world around us and look to that heavenly home because we are sure one day yes. he will come. We know not the hour of the master's appearing. Can I inject that one? Number 604. We know not the hour. Okay, and the online audience, um, you, can, you can give a selection as well. Yes. All right. So we are all worshiping together. It is just a foretaste of what will happen when Jesus comes. Not you, Brother Portius. Are you longing, really, really longing, you know? For that day, when I sing these songs, you know, I just get this special lift. Yes. We know not the hour of the Master's appearing, yet signs all foretell that the moment is nearing when he shall return. This the promise most cheering, but we know not the hour he will come. Let us watch and be ready, he will come. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he will come in the clouds of the Father's but we 
Lord. Not a good night for singing for me. There's light for the wise who are seeking salvation. There's truth in the book of the Lord's revelation. Each But with not, yes, he will come, he will come. Let us watch and be ready, he will come. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he will come. In the sweet by and by. In the sweet by and by. In the sweet by and by. There's a land that is fair than day. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father went over the way to prepare. gather at the river number 432 shall we gather at the river where bright feet have trod where bright angel feet have trod with his crystal tied forever flowing by the throne of God shall we gather at the river 
Where bright angels feet have trod With his crystal tight forever Flowing by the throne of God Everybody join the song Yes, we will gather at the river Oh yes, that beautiful, beautiful river Oh, gather with the saints of the river That flows the On the margin of the river On the margin of the river Washing up in silver spray And over to our pastor, Pastor Elder. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, uh, Elder Portia and Elder Harrison, Elder Marion Harrison, for leading out with the praise and worship. Now, we know that normally it comes on to events like these people tend to want to be sad and gloomy but saints of God whenever whenever um, it comes on to situations like these we should still be happy and joyful knowing that the one who passed because he lived a life that was pleasing to God and he was connected to God we have the hope to see him again so we are happy to know that good night again everyone and let me just use this opportunity to welcome you all to this um, prayer meeting session. We are here just to show our support to the family of the Davises. And uh, despite what many may think at times, it's never a good that someone who once walked among us is no longer around. So we want to just let you know, Davis family, that we are here grieving with you and we are here to support you. So let me welcome you all and commend you for coming out to support the family. And I do hope that as we, as we journey together and worship together, that we'll feel that fellowship and give that support that is so very much needed for the family at this time. So again, thank you. And they'll hand over to Pastor. Oh, we have the first opening prayer, right? The first prayer. So we'll invite Sister Carlene at this time to come forward as we shall pray. Thanks. Good night, everyone. Please stand for prayer. 
Our most kind and righteous eternal God and Father who art in heaven, as we thy children come before you this evening, dear God, we want to give you thanks and praise for taking us home safely into this your course to just have fellowship with you on behalf of the family of the Davis, dear Lord. Father, I pray that you will comfort the Davis family and also their extended family. Thank you for the life of Brother Davis. May you help us not to mourn, but to give you thanks and praise because we know that if we are faithful to you, one day we will all meet again. Be with all the proceedings that will be here tonight and continue to bless and keep us and help us to remain faithful for Christ's sake. Amen. Thank you so much. All right. it's, it's good when they know, don't know your business. Because everybody come up to the handing over to pastor. <laughs> so I was about to put somebody else up next. All right. But it's good to be here to um, share with you all in this space. And let me say welcome to those online from overseas, from Kingston and other distant places and where new heaven, heaven regent street yes tivoli gardens the inner kings and the inner city all right and for all of those coming from albion and white horses and um pamphlet and um elder where you live again <laughs> loud <name. laughs> What is sister? What is sister? Uh, more telling you not to tell me. <laughs> All right. So let me say welcome to each and every one of you. Thank you again, Elder Portius, Elder Marion, Elder Calvert, and uh, Sister Luke. We need to change that, you know. We need to change that because we should just go four in a row. Mm hmm. Oh, it seems like only Sister Luke pick up what I'm saying. <laughs> Well, that is good. Did you pick that up, Elder? Yes, sir. Something like that. <laughs> so we had Elder, we had Elder Harrison, Marion, and Elder Portius leading out the song service. Then we had Elder Calvert doing the, the welcome, and then I break the eldership. So you pick up now. <laughs> All right. So. We're here to, to celebrate, to encourage, and to pray with, to lift up, and to bear up our brother, uh, the Davis's family, um, on behalf of the passing of dad and granddad. All right? And uh, I want for us to be open, because after I would have made a few statements by way of encouragement, then we're going to open the floor for those both online and those in the house to give their memories and their um, encouragements to the family. But we want to anchor that activity in the word, a word found in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13. And this is what it says. And I heard... A voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. This is perhaps one of the most cheerful passages of scripture that speaks about death. Because it's not all about death. It is pregnant with life. It is pregnant with hope. It is pregnant with reward. It is pregnant with uh, God being excited. And we are supposed to take how God treats death, take a cue from it, and treat it similar. I invite you to bow your heads with me for a word of prayer. Father, as we come to you this evening, 
In the name of your dear son, we ask that this word of encouragement, that you will place it in our hearts, may it never be separated from us, but may we hold on to it, because in doing so, we are also holding on to hope. This is our prayer with thanksgiving, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, John the Revelator, among the various and many things that he saw, Sister Green, John said, I heard something among the stuff that I saw. I heard a loud voice. I heard a voice from heaven, a heavenly voice. I hear a voice that rings with no hoarseness. I hear a voice that rings and when I heard that voice, I have to look up. And when I listen clearly, John says, it is the voice from heaven that was addressing him. And the voice that he heard asked him to do something. He said, right. I don't want you to just hear but I want you to write it down, chronicle this. This is something noteworthy to remember. Now, I remember the days of writing things in my hand middle because they were important. And I also remember days of forgetting that your hand middle has a way of cleaning itself. And so sometimes you write something down and it just disappears from your hand middle. And so God said, write this down. I want Yalas. I want white horses. I want the Davises family. I want family in years to come, generations yet unborn, to have this on record. That when the dead dies in the Lord, they are blessed. They are blessed. It's a blessing to live, but it's more of a blessing to have lived and died in the Lord. Because those who die in the Lord follows the example of Lazarus. Lazarus is asleep. He ain't dead. Lazarus is asleep. And anything that sleeps must wake up. And I'm glad that God is the one who wakes the dead. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And I am the one who is going to call not just Lazarus or Leroy. But if any of us ever drop out from this number, he's going to call our names as well. And I love the songwriter that says, he knows my name. You know that song? He knows my name. Oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he tells me that I am his own. He knows my name. And because he knows my name, he knew Lazarus' name. He was able to say, Lazarus, come forth. So the Bible says, from this time going forward, let it be written, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. And the spirit couldn't help but to say, yes! 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 The spirit had to break his silence. So I don't know who it was that said, blessed are the dead, but the spirit had to chime in and say, yes! Are you with me? Mm -hmm. That they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. When I die, if the spirit can say yes, I would have failed in my mission. When you die, if the spirit of God can say yes, you would have failed in your mission. Because death precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And when we die, 
Even the spirit of God must be able to affirm and attest. Yes, one more for the kingdom. One more resting in the grave. One more resting from their labors. And one more their works are following them. And I believe that God has already said yes to Leroy. Am I the only one who believe that? Yeah. <laughs> I believe that, I don't believe that it's Sunday coming, God is going to say yes. Hello, somebody? <laughs> He's not waiting to make up his mind. The moment Leroy expired his last breath, God says yes. One more free from temptation. One more free from prosecution. One more free from the taunts of the devil. One more free from pain and ache. Yes. Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. From henceforth, yes, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Hmm. God not like lazy people, you know. I should have just finished a while ago instead of go on that now. Not true. <laughs> but I want to let you know, God not like lazy people. Because you must have works that can follow you. You must have works that can follow your profession. You must have works that doesn't say a liar did a tell. You must have works that say, I true him did I talk. As him live, I saw him dead. So, 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 our works will and must follow us. So let us do the work that our hands have found to do. Because what? In a little while? Oh yes, because none of us came here to turn stone. And so I'm going to pause right here. And it, it is from this that we encourage one another. It is from this understanding, from this blessedness, from this peace that the dead are experiencing, resting in the grave and waiting for the resurrector's voice, Jesus. It is from this assurance, this blessed assurance that we say to one another, Hold and ready for the kingdom. If that is you, I'm going to ask you to stand with me as we pray. Father, thank you so much for those who stood in recognition of the need of a life sealed by the Spirit of God and sanctioned by the Spirit of God, saying, yes, this is another life, another brother, another sister, Another father, another mother, another dad, another granddad that is ready for the kingdom of God. We ask, Lord, that each of us will take the time to make our professing in, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Can I, can I invite Sister Harrison to just join me up here? And um, we're going to make use of the, the, the song. It was the song we were going to open with, Come Thou Almighty King. Um, it's a praise song. And after this song, the floor is open for encouragements and so on. And so we're going to ask you to come up front to, to speak as the cameras are on. And Brother Elder Davis... You can get them to speak as well online. All right, good. So it's open to both the online space and those that are in the Kenton Auditorium.
praise the Lord. Who will be the first? Come, Eldermore. That's a wonderful meditation song. No, I that's what I know. All right, good night, everyone. I, I can't say it's a pleasure being here, but I give thanks that I can be here at this point in time on behalf of the Yellow Stem Adventist Church, the well, our pastors here, board members and the members alike. We really want to say to the Davis family and to the White Horses SDA family that we also mourn and grieve with you at this point in time as you have lost a loved one. Uh, the good thing is that I'm not standing here to speak just to say some words, Elder Green, because we know the man. I think when he came to Yellas first, he came to Yellas Church, right, Brother Davis? Right, and he came to Yellas Church. And I remember, I think the night he came, we didn't know who this man was. But he came the night, I think you were there, Elder Green, and he came and he said he wanted to sing a song. And we were wondering, now, who this man does come into church and does want to come sing a song? I try to remember, Elder Green, if I whisper in your ears, if I should allow him to sing or not, because we don't know who this man is. But he came and he spoke with us, and he wasn't aggressive, nice and calm, and so you couldn't resist. Just to say, all right, let's trust your spirit and give the man a chance to sing. And he, he did a song, and then after that he came a couple of Wednesday nights, and then I think we found out afterwards that it's actually Brother Davis' father. And, you know, after that we kind of develop a relationship, and he would come and talk with us and be a part of the worship, and he would give us some of the experiences from his past life and so on. So it was a pleasure knowing him. And the fact that he is one who knew the Lord is the most important thing. He was one who was a God-fearing man. Pastor saying that we should say what? Yes. I can say yes that he is one who knew the Lord. And I'm hoping by God's grace that we will be able to see him when we get there. And I'm hoping by God's grace that the life that he would have lived as well would have influenced somebody else to come and to know who he is. I know there are other members of Gellas who would love to be here as well because they knew him for those who came to Wednesday night service. I know they would like to be here as well. But, all right. Okay. So, I just want to say to Brother Davis, it is not easy and I give God the glory and praise I can stand here tonight to smile because I tell you, tell you losing a loved one is not an easy one and losing your father is not an easy one the fact that I'm smiling now I find it strange but I guess God knows but it is never easy to lose a loved one and you know it is often said and, and we, we normally do this and we go beside the person and say I understand my brother. Boy, you don't understand a thing. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> you really don't understand. And normally I would say to persons, I, 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 I stand beside you and I comfort you. But I learned last week, is last week a time moves so fast, two weeks ago, that take it from me. There are some emotions that take you over that only God himself knows where they come from. And it, it all boils down to the relationship that you had with the individual. If the relationship was not a fake one, then you're going to feel the loss. If there's something real, you'll feel the loss. Why am I saying that? I spoke to Brother Davis when I found out that his father died, he told me at school. And what I saw was, when he told me the story of what took place, I saw someone who had a relationship with his father. And because he has a relationship, I know it's not going to be easy. But I can say to you this much. Not that I understand. No. But in everything, God is more than willing and able to give you the strength to make it through. And most importantly, keep on living a life that at the end of the day, you can be able to go home and together we can live together. So comfort. Be comforted with the fact that one day, death will die and we will live victorious. Thank you. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to take um, Ella Lascelles, who is in the virtual space. So we're going to do one present and one accounted for. 
All right, so please release Ella Lascelles to say his bit. Thank you very much. Hope you're hearing me clearly. Yes. I'm Elder Lassell Village from the Washington Garden Seventh-day Adventist Church in Kingston. You might have heard about us, but we are talked in a community um, near to the Washington, Gar Washington Boulevard and Mullines Road. Now, for a couple of years, we had Brother Leroy Davis visiting the Washington Gardens Seventh Day Adventist Church. And the last can and we, we understand. see you? Are you hearing me? Yeah, we are hearing you. Can you open your video so we can see you? We can't see you. <laughs> All right, sir. I'll do that. If it's not available, then we'll understand. Go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm trying here, but it's not giving me... Uh, okay. Oh, it's, not, it's not working. But I, I, I was saying that, brother, we understood that brother Leroy was a member of the, the um, church at six miles you know yes, sir. um our sister church and he came to washington for the past two two years he has been visiting with us and specifically he came to um sabbath school number three which i'm i'm the teacher this quiet man just come in every 8 30 sabbath morning and sit before anybody else come to church. That was a hallmark of Brother Leroy. He was always early for worship. Quiet and assuming he was. And you have to call his name, dig him out, and, and ask him to respond in, in Sabbath school. And he, he always have a point um, when you ask him. Um, and when we, he was at church two Sabbaths before we got the, the dreadful news of Brother Leroy found dead. Um, and um, the, the, the whole church was asking us, and um, we got this photograph of him in his little um, west coat. You know, he always wear his, um, his little coat to church, you know. And um, everybody knew him for that. And they identified him right away when we got the news. Now, my friends, it was quite disturbing. We had two people from the class dying about the same week. So you can understand how the class felt. Um, we miss Brother Leroy greatly. We miss him. And um, I speak then on behalf of not just Sabbath school class number three, but I speak on behalf of the pastor and all the members of the Washington Garden Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are really sorry for the passing of our brother, your family member, the Davis, and the church, you know, because we belong to a, a big family, the church. And I always boast about that, that my biggest family is the church to which I belong. And we will miss Brother Leroy. But we know, as I, I heard um, the, the message before, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. For the blessing is pronounced on those who follow the Lord's will and died faithfully in the Lord. We look forward to that day then with great anticipation with all the saints um, when death will die and we shall gather at the river, beautiful river, when we are glorified with Jesus Christ when he comes again. I say to the family, 
the, the Davis family and the church family. Weep if you have to, but joy will come in the morning, that beautiful morning when Jesus shall come to gather his loved ones home. I say to all of us, be encouraged and wait and pray and work as we wait for that coming, that great coming, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and death will be no more. Thank you for allowing us to be part of the, the program this evening. And we look forward to attending the service, the Thanksgiving service at Yalas. God bless you. And I, I want to say to those um, those of us here who are listening, we are being disturbed by those who are not muting, you know, um, and um, a lot of con other conversation and distraction is going on. So please, um, control, please um, mute these folks so that all of us can um, enjoy the service. God bless you all. Thank you. All right. Do we have any in-house ready? If not, okay, come Elder Green, and then we're going to take Albert, who is online. So we're going one, one, all right? Good night, everyone. Um, is it even? Is night or even? Oh, <laughs> the Bible says, um, when God separated the night from the darkness, from the daylight, and he called it darkness, night. And the daylight like day. So once it dark, it's night. <laughs> That's what the Bible said. <laughs> yes. Okay, yes. Um, you know, Elder Moore would have said a little of what I would, would say, but I'll just leave that because it was already said. Now, um, Brother Davis is someone who, since we have known him, as, we, as you know, we met him at church here, I, I think I dropped him home the night and I said to him that, I live just across from where you live. And he said to me, oh, that's where you live. And, he's, and I said, yes. So since that, he would, um, every time he's passing by, he would stop. And he would call to us and we'd have a little conversation. If the gate is open, he comes right in, right up to the door. And he hey, Brother Green, and, and we have a little conversation. His conversation, though, is mainly about witnessing and how you should witness and what you can do witness and so that is uh, brother Davis now when we don't see him for a little while we know that he would normally be in um, in Kingston and so when we heard the news that he died you know yes we were a bit shocked because we didn't heard of him uh, being sick and so we were expecting to see him sometime because we know that if you don't see him here he's in Kingston and then you see him shortly here and so we're expect to see we're expecting to see him um, sometime but you know um, that has it be. He, God see it fit. We don't, we, as I said, um, we, we, we will never understand some of the things that happen and how God allowed them to happen. But, you know, God works in some ways that human hearts will never understand. But I want to say that he, he's a man of, he was a man of God. He lived a life that he knows that was pleasing to God. And, um, is an example for us though that um, each time somebody, is di somebody dies it says to us that our time is coming and um, we must make our calling an election show because the person who dies their probation has closed and there's absolutely nothing else you can do about that but we who are alive must realize that you know one day my time is coming and you don't know how you don't know when and so it is an it is a lesson to us that we um live our life each day to please god because we don't know when he will call our names and so i want to encourage the family brother davis and the rest of the family that you know uh it doesn't matter how often these things happen we'll never get used to it because as the bible says that death is an enemy but the truth is even though death is an enemy, we know that after death, there is a life. And for those who live for God, as the pastor said earlier, he's just sleeping. And once you are sleeping, you will wake up someday. 
and we are, are looking for that day when we shall meet Brother Davis again because we know that he dies in the Lord and by faith we are looking to see him on that glorious day. Um, there's this uh, song I love to talk about. Um, this gentleman by the name of Jim Hill, you know, he has a, a mother-in-law who was very ill and he, 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 he was, um, somehow she wouldn't get better and he tried to figure out how is it that good people sick and they wouldn't get better. He was somewhat questioning God. I don't know if you ever question God. I almost quarrel with God sometimes. And he was driving home from work one evening and he was questioning God about his mother-in-law's sickness because he just couldn't understand. She was a good woman, yet she was sick and she wasn't seeming to get in well. And so it, was, it bothers him. And worst of all, he just became a Christian. So he didn't understand much but he was there questioning God and questioning God about her sickness. And while he was questioning God, um, some words were coming back to him as if he were getting answers. And so he rushed home and he gets a piece of cardboard and he write down the words that were coming back to him. And so as his mother-in-law get worse, he, he go to the piece of cardboard and he picked it up and he read through the words just to bring comfort to himself. And so shortly, and so um, he realized that, you know, these words can be put in a song. And he put tune to it, and he make it into a song. And he sang it to his mother-in-law, and she died shortly after. But the good, good thing about it is, the words of the song says, There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the skies, no more tears to dim the eyes. All is peace forevermore. And that happy golden shore. What a day. A glorious day that will be. And so tonight we have the assurance. We have the hope that that glorious day is coming. So even though you mourn, you can mourn with hope knowing that you are looking for that day when Jesus shall come. And so, Brother Davis and family, take heart and please remember that our prayers is with you. We are praying for you continually and we know that the Lord will see you through this time of bereavement. God knows best. Whatever he does, he knows why. Only thing that we don't understand. And so, take heart. God will keep it keep you and will continue to be with you throughout your time of bereavement. God bless you as we continue tonight. Thank, thank you so much, Elder Green. Now we're going to invite Albert that is online to open his mic and to speak to us. And please uh, tell us a little bit more of yourself, whether it's Brother Albert, Elder Albert, Mr. Albert, whatever it is. <laughs> but it's not just Albert. All right, thank you so much. All right, good evening, good evening everybody. Um, I am Ella Albert Graham from the New Haven Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are Brother Davis. I've been a member, I've been an active member for many, many years. Um, New Haven was his resident church, and we um, know him there. Very active person. When, he's, when he was around, you, you know. He's not somebody that um, kept silent, a um, man who loved the prophecies. He had his own ministry. Um, he often visited places like um, Tivoli Garden, where um, gardens where he would have ministered. And uh, so sometimes he did ministry and the, um, the public transportation. So um, he was a member of New Haven and for many, many years, as I said, and an active member has been well known, well loved. Everybody knew Brother Davis, Brother Leeward. So, on behalf of no time as far spent, on behalf of the New Haven family, um, the Board of Elders, the Church Board, and members who are online as well, who want to, um, to register our sincerest.
condolences to you, the brethren at um, at Wise Horses and other places, the family, family of Leroy. I think I spoke with Damian, yes, and uh, so the Washington Garden SDF family as well. We are he visited for a short while, but New Haven was there. He had his membership and had been a member for many, many years. So we are praying for the family, praying for strength. And we know that we are Leroy. We will see him again if we are faithful. So um, we have good hope, we have good cheers, and we are praying for the family and also for the brethren at White Arses, Washington Garden, and also New Haven. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you so much. Good night again. Um, I read in the Desire of Ages about the death of Jesus and when he was on the cross. Ellen White painted a picture like this. She said, Careful hands gently took him from the cross. And um, it was, I think it was Joseph of Arimathea. And um, he would have climbed on a ladder to get up to where Jesus was. And he carefully took him down. And I would believe he got help. And they carefully wrapped him in new, clean linen. And they buried him decently. Some of us may have the attitude that when our loved one dies because the person is dead, we can't just jam them any way, just send them away any old way. But it's your loved one, isn't that so? Somebody whom you love. Somebody who you walked with, you talked with, you ate with, and you touched. So when this person dies, your heart string, some of, one of your heart string gets broken. Am I, am I right right there, Imam? I have experienced death in my family, death of family members. Since... Um, Damien became my son-in-law. I don't know, but the bond has grown so much. It is as if he is my son. Because I, I, I don't think I would treat him differently when it comes to certain situations. It is as if he's my son. And I love him dearly. And, you know, it was Friday night at worship, he said to his wife, because people see me laughing, they don't know what I'm going through. I share his pain. And Sabbath morning, I wept at home. And when I thought of this tall, strapping man, as everybody has said it, I don't have to say it again. He loved the Lord. He loved the Bible. If he came by on Friday evening when we would have worshipped together, he would be reading his Bible. And no matter how dinner is ready, and he's reading his Bible passage. He's not leaving it to eat until he has completed and he is satisfied. He always acknowledges the setting of the sun, especially on Sabbath. And so I believe he has left a legacy, especially to his grandsons. And um, it is telling me something here. When people have loved ones who are dead, and they are mourning and they need comfort. Who should comfort them? Shouldn't, be, shouldn't it be Seventh-day Adventist Christians? Shouldn't we be there for them? Shouldn't we, even if we cannot go to the funeral, shouldn't we be there for them to let them know that if you had somebody dead before, you can say, I empathize with you. That means you, you understand what they're going through. You know? And so the death has brought a shock to us. And... We can't put nobody in heaven and can't take nobody down. But I pray that by God's grace that he, he died in the faith. We know he was a faithful man. And I really believe so. He always has his Bible and his quarterly. And I pray that when we see things like this happening that we will look at it and take a stock. Because some of us may feel because somebody dies. Oh, it's not me. But nobody knows. So may God help us. You know, my desire is for, I just, I love evangelism. I love it. And my desire is for us who claim to be Seventh-day Adventist Christians to get serious about who we are. Yes. 
that when death comes, I, I, I enjoy listening to preachers like um, Walter Pearson and um, CD books. Their works do follow them, right, Pastor? They are dead, but I can lie in my bed and hear them preaching. So when it says our works do follow us, what influence have we cast in this life that when we die, people don't have to buck and shuffle to what can I say and tell a lie? Let it be authentic what we are able to say about someone who dies. So I believe it is time for us to claim to be God's people. We are the remnant. Whether we know it, understand it, believe it or not. Make our calling and election sure that the coming of Jesus does not take us by surprise. If we die tonight, if we die early, whenever we die, that would have been it for us. So may God continue to bless us as we keep the blessed hope alive in our hearts. God bless you. Thank you very much, Sister Elder Harrison. We're going to be taking another presentation. And this one will be done by Anne Marie Chamberlain, and she is Elder Davis's aunt. So we're going to we're going to be listening to that presentation at this moment. Good day, everyone. It's a pleasure seeing everyone out, you know, on this grand occasion, even though it is really sad to see the occasion that really can bring family together. But, you know, we just have to understand life as it goes by. I just want to take this um, opportunity to say a few, you know, of my memory about my, my dear brother, Leroy. Um, Anne-Marie, the second sister of three siblings, and Leroy is the second son of 10 siblings. Maybe this is the reason why Lyra and I share such a close relationship because we both hold second position in the family lineage. There is not one week past that Lyra would not call me and say, what going on? I just had to check up on you. And from there, we both would have very long conversation about different, different things. All different types of story and, you know, about different, different ty type of things. We will talk from one thing to the other. To prove a point, you know, it was a Friday before I learned that Leroy had passed. Me and Leroy have a long talk. And I tell you, we talk, we talk almost nearly half an hour. And then to my surprise, the Sunday morning, I got the shocking news of my life that Leroy was found dead in his home. I don't know how I didn't go shortly behind you know, that news because it was so such a shock to me. But, you know, I tried my best to withstood myself that I don't find myself in such a great panic attack. Leah was a person who was willing to do any favor for me. I can call upon Leah to go anywhere to do anything for me. He would be so willing. The last job Leroy was doing was a messenger work at the Tivoli Garden Comprehensive High School. And, you know, since um, September 2015, and Leroy was so highly respected and favored at school 
because of you know the type of person he was. Everybody respect Leroy. And I remember I called him and said, Leroy, you know, I was thinking of making some pudding to take um ask of a car go to the school and get themselves from it. And before I even said the word good, Leroy, you know, answered and said, Yeah man, a good idea that yes. And I tell her very quickly, I decided to do start the business. And when I give Leroy the, the pudding them every morning, at least 50, 40 to 50 slices of pudding. I don't know how Leroy working out and still find time to get the pudding themselves. But every evening he would bring the, the money for the pudding come give me. Leroy was like a husband to me. We go places, most of the time we go even reverse deal in St. Catherine to look for the only heart that we have alive. And he was always willing, you know, to go on any errand that I asked him to go. I remember also there was a time I was very down. And when I said, I decided, you know, that I was going to pray and ask God to send a some help for me so that I can get some assistance to buy even a little grocery. And to my surprise, I hear a bike ride up at the, my gate. When I look outside, it was Leroy, and I'm still from out of the gate, and I said, and, and I was so upset about, you know, I not having anything to do that. I said, Leroy, we're outside so far, I can't, I can't. me, you know, coming for me, you come to. And when Leroy came in, he gave me two money and said, hey, put this in my account for me and he that I fear. So I said, who could this be but Jesus? You know, God, God uses Leroy to really fill that gap for me. You know, that I was so in need of that afternoon. Me and Leroy share such a close connection that even at school that I was working, the basic school here, I would call me and say, Aunt, you want me to come over there, come do devotion with the kids them? And I would encourage him to come and Leroy I would be, because he has such a passion with working for God, Leroy would come and arrange that one day out of every week to come and you know carry on the devotion at the school. Leroy was such a humble, quiet person. Leroy, if, if you don't say nothing to Leroy, Leroy would sit down there and just looking around. And you have to engage him in a talk in the way of Leroy quiet and I give himself no trouble. So when me hear about Leroy, that I tell you this is this is more than a husband to me that passed. And I don't know how am I gonna really able to live you know with these feelings for the rest of my life. You know, Leo I also would always even pass by my home from work every afternoon. And when he come by me say, and what where I say? You know, nothing can eat there for lunch. And I would try to see whatever they come can find for give him. But just to show the, you know, the the close relationship that me and Leroy really have. But, you know, them say every good thing one day will come to an end. But look, Leroy, you may you will not be able to hear my voice and what I'm saying about you, but you know, may your soul rest in peace. You have gone too soon. But God knows everything best and God understands. But I pray that as we live faithfully that the day will come 
when we will see you face to face again in the new Jerusalem. Sleep on, I tell you, in peace until that great get not morning. Trust God that you will be one of the first one that will rise to meet your Savior in the air. Rest in peace, my dear brother Leroy. Okay, thank you so much, Auntie. And um, at this time, we want to just pause to recognize Diane, Leroy's wife, who is online. Welcome. Happy to have you. We also want to acknowledge Lanique. Um, that would have been um, Diane's daughter, right? Leroy's stepdaughter. Okay, so we want to acknowledge because we know the relationship right there is very close. And so we want to acknowledge both of you at this time. Um, just before we take, um, is it Brian? Brian Davis, we're going to be asking those on the inside just to make use of the hymn 99. 99, be not dismayed, whatever betide. God will take care of you. After we would have taken Brian, then we're, I don't know if there's anybody else online, but what we're going to be doing, we're going to be taking three prayers as we inch towards the close of tonight's program. So we're going to take Psalm 99, then we're going to go back in the virtual space with Mr. Brian Davis, and if we have anyone else from the virtual space, then we go into our three prayers inching towards the close. All right? Be not dismayed. Ella P, you know, help me out. <laughs> Ella P says the throat. Sister Marianne, come help me. <laughs> uh, you see why we need both the young people them <laughs> and the old people them? <laughs> because we help one another. <laughs> Yeah. 
last voice. <laughs> Thank you so much, Elder. All right, so we're going to go into the virtual space and we're going to take Byron Ryan at this time. Sorry. Yes, Brian Davis, yes. Good night, everyone. Really must say thank you. Yes, Leroy is uh, my big brother and it will take me as a shock. And to be honest, although I can't really pitch them as a man who passed, because the last time I spoke to him like three weeks ago and we had a good conversation and not as normal as forever, but it teach me one thing the mortality of men and my own mortality and it's important that we always say it as Seventh-day Adventists but we it's important that we live it that we live every day as if it's the last day so we ensure that our hearts is right with God because indeed no one know their timing when but um, another brother who called me on the Sunday morning and said that heard that don't fully as as everybody has is a man who loved the Lord, is a man who even when he was retired and was working, he always find time to minister. The man normally checked me at my workplace and, and we spoke and he's a, a man normally say what he's doing in the fields. So I know that someone who loved the Lord and someone who always want to witness to bring others to the saving grace of Christ. So those are things what we can take from his life. And as I live, so that kingdom. God bless each and every one of us. All right, thank you. You have anybody else there, Elder? Sir Davis, you have anybody else there? Okay. All right, so... What we're going to do, we're not going to take three prayers. We're going to take two. So we're going to ask Elder Donald Green to come forward and offer the first one, a prayer for the family, the Davis's family. And I will pray the final one, all right, as the shepherd. Um, and then we're going to be signing out from the virtual space and from here as well. We have refreshments, um, incidentally, that will only be for those in the actual space. Um, but we hope to meet on Sunday all of those, for, or most of those from the virtual space. Albert, Lascelles, I think Anne-Marie will be here as well. Amen. I'm looking forward to putting some face, especially to those who we couldn't see their faces tonight. All right, so I'm going to ask Elder Green, please, to just bear up there. Let us um, uh, bow our heads reverently as we talk to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, our loving, compassionate Father, tonight, Lord, we bow in your presence, recognizing you as our Lord and our Savior. Lord, we recognize you as the great comforter, the one who knows the hearts of your people. Father, you are the one who created. You know all about the human body. And sometimes, Lord, our hearts pain us because of what sin has does, done to us. But mighty God, tonight we come to you knowing that you are the resurrection and the life. You, Lord, nothing takes you by surprise because you are always 
a God who knows the future. Tonight, Lord, I lift up the family of the Davis to you. Mighty God, I know that their hearts are paining at this time. But Lord, you who were human, you trod this earth, you understand the pain that we bear. You cried when Lazarus died. And so, Lord, you can be identified with our sorrow, with our pain, and with our crying. So tonight, Lord, I put them in your presence. I ask, for oh God, that you will be a comfort to them. Wrap your arms of love around them, Lord, and embrace them with your marvelous grace. Divine Father, they need you now more than ever. Father, all the thoughts that are coming into their minds, oh God, I pray, Lord, that you will be in their minds at this time. Divine Father, we know that death brings disappointment. Death break a family circle but tonight lord i pray and ask you to be that missing link in the chain that is broken take the space almighty god and be that comfort be that peace be that father be that grandfather be that brother be that family member who will stand up and bring comfort and peace to their hearts Father, I pray that you will take them in your arms at this time and help them, Lord, to understand that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So, Lord, help them to be faithful so that when that morning shall break and you shall come to Ghana, your people home, they, along with their loved one, will be caught up, Lord, to meet you in the air. And so, Lord, I pray that you will continue to be with them, continue to bless them, Lord, continue to provide for them the necessary things of life. And, Father, help them to be faithful to the end. Because, as you have said in your words, those who are faithful to the end, the same shall be saved. So, Lord, I pray that you will take full control of them, be in their homes, be with the family. And, Lord, bring peace, bring understanding, bring comfort, bring joy, bring happiness. Thank you, Almighty God, for your presence here with us this evening. And, Mighty God, may this service be a testimony to all of us that we will order our lives according to your will and according to your way, so that when that time shall come when we shall part this earth, we will have a part in your kingdom when you shall return. So, Lord, thank you for hearing us. Thank you for answering our prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Elder Green. You're All right, um, I have a notice here from Elder Levon. Um, he wanted me to read it. I don't know if I should come up there. Come on. All right, so good night, everyone. All right, so Levon says, I knew Brother Leroy through his son and the love and affection that he showed towards his father. I guess that's me. He loves to sing, gives a testimony, and share stories from when he was younger. His death was sudden and tragic, and I extend my condolence to the entire family but especially to Brother Davis and to encourage him that though it is hard just to hold strong and to know that God is in control. I know the relationship that you both had and how close you were to each other and how you cared for your father. But fret not because we have a blessed hope and when Jesus descends with a shout, Papa D will in the first resurrection will be raised. So hold strong, my brother. Those are the words of Ella Levon Harrison. And I say thank you, Ella Lev, and everybody else who is here and online for your support. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The, so we're going to have the final prayer 
and then the closing song will close us out all right and the closing song will be 65 number 65 god be with you till we meet again so we're going to have the closing prayer just now and then we'll take the song as we close out let us pray father in heaven we pause a moment longer in your presence we lift the davises the family before you that's the family of leroy his wife his children his siblings his friends his neighbors those who at this time his church family those who at this time are rocked and is reeling with the pain of the loss we ask for your comfort we ask for your open bosom that the family will find there a place for their heads to just rest and recoup from the storms of life we ask for your strength to be in their minds and in their bodies give them the strength to go forward to move onward and to recover and to keep on keeping on we ask lord as we commit them into your hands their stress their pain their sorrow their woes we their, their unfinished plans we commit them into your hands and ask almighty god you who are the resurrection and the life that you will allow the joy of your resurrection to be that which thrills their heart even now and hereafter bless us to this end and we ask lord if there are members of the family not yet saved not yet committed to you that they will come to know you who to know is life eternal so that they will be able to sing the song never part again because when all of your children should meet around your throne it will be an occasion that we will never part again bless us to this end is our prayer with thanksgiving take us home safely to our different places of abode we ask in the name of jesus amen and amen all right and so we're gonna make use of the hymn number six yeah. uh, there was one more thing about Elder, um, brother davis he would boast about his wife he said she was the queen. You would say she was the most virtuous woman. <laughs> so uh, is she still hearing? He would say, oh, I, I told her to her face already. So it's not just a make, it is not a makeup thing. He would boast about her very often. Okay, God be with you till we meet again by his counsel's guide. Uphold you with his sheep. Securely fold you, God be with you till we meet again. <clears throat>
Thanks again to everybody who came out tonight. I um, don't know what I would do if it was me one up here. <laughs> you know, but it's greatly appreciated to see the church family out with us at this time. Um, for those who are online, I want to say a special thank you to, even though you could not make it here, physically because of the distance but you still came and we felt your presence um just a bit of notice for sunday um the coroner said that we can get viewing so um viewing will be from about 11 11 30 um to 12 o'clock. So the service starts at 12, but the viewing will begin um, from around 11. Um, interment mm -hmm. is at the Lloyd's Cemetery, not far from this church, maybe about a mile or so. Um, and uh, the repast will be held right here on this compound, just the same. So feel free to come on down and get some of the cool St. Thomas breeze and uh, be refreshed and spend uh, time with us as we put away our dearly beloved in a nice way. So thanks again for coming out, family. Really do appreciate it. And even though you're not seeing any tears coming from my eyes. Um, I'm still really feeling that it at this time. Diane, I know that you are listening. I'm also saying that you are to take heart and have hope because we are all in this together. Sing together. <laughs> okay, so Uncle Owen, I know that you are there. Maybe you did not wish to speak just now. Well, we are looking forward to hear your, hearing your voice, especially on Sunday. So safe travel while you try to get here and you know the rest of the story. All right, so we'll be signing off now until Sunday. And we have good roads for those who are coming in from Kingston. It's about a 20-minute drive and... Um, we have a lot of scenery now. You know, you can see this, the ocean, ocean view. Um, you can see the sh ships passing by, you know, and 
before it by before you know it you are in St. Thomas. So you don't have to worry about your cars being damaged anymore and <laughs> taking a long time to get here. You know, just a few minutes to Kingston and back or from Kingston um, to St. Thomas. So thank you again and we'll see you on Sunday. So walk good. Bye. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming now. So safe travel home now. Yes, dear. Thank you. Good night. See you. Um, see you. Thank God you. God bless. Yeah, all yeah. the best. Take care. Yes, dear. Guys on Sunday, God's willing. Yes, dear. Bye bye. Night, night. night. All right, Sister Flowers, I see you.